Mary, my husband, follows Kung Ji Wan, a terminally ill cancer patient. Raised by her father after her mother ran away when she was a teenager, Ji Wan married her colleague and long-term boyfriend Park Min Huan, who subsequently quit his job and, instead of working, has been spending his days slacking off and leeching money from her. When one day, Ji Wan is told by the hospital staff that her guardian hasn't paid her hospital bill. Frustrated, Ji Wan catches a taxi and ends up with a mysterious driver who takes her down a stunning cherry blossom road. However, the magic ends there. When Ji Wan opens the door to her home, she is appalled to see Min Huan in bed with none other than her sister-like best friend Jong Soo Min. Watching them cuddling together, Ji Wan even hears him say that he bought cancer insurance so that he can earn millions when she dies. Blinded by her fury, Ji Wan storms inside the room and throws whatever she can reach, all while yelling about how she is going to report them for insurance fraud. As she is freaking out, there is a struggle, and Min Huan pushes Ji Wan into a glass table, and she dies. But Ji Wan's story is not over. After falling on the table, Ji Wan opens her eyes and finds herself in her office facing Min Huan. Suddenly filled with rage, Ji Wan starts attacking Min Huan until she is blocked by her boss, the handsome Yu Ji Hyuk, who is also the grandson of the company's founder and future CEO. Running into the street, Ji Wan frantically looks around and, reading the billboards, Ji Wan is overwhelmed to learn that she has somehow time-traveled a decade back to 2013. The next day, Ji Wan returns to the office and, during her coffee break, remembers once getting hurt by a coffee cup falling from the edge of the table. So, when a cup is about to fall, Ji Wan avoids it. However, later, she ends up getting hurt in the exact spot. Ji Wan also spots that, while she avoided getting a scar on her arm, Ji Hyuk got the wound instead. Putting it all together, she speculates that, although fate is inevitable, whatever happened could happen to someone else instead. Just as she is thinking about her fate, Su Min shows up and Ji Wan gets an idea. She decides to make Su Min marry her future husband Min Huan and take her fate. Later, when Ji Wan and He Yan, a friendly colleague and Ji Hyok's stepsister, whom Ji Wan has befriended, leave lunch, Su Min and Min Huan are left on their own. And, when the two of them get squished together in a full elevator, Su Min begins to flirt with Min Huan. However, unlike his 2023 self, although Min Huan would love to sleep with Su Min, at this point, he is still conscious of Ji Wan. We'll see how long that lasts. After work, Ji Wan shares with He Yan that, although Su Min is lying to her about them going to have barbecue alone that weekend, she knows that it's, in reality, a surprise high school reunion, and this time, she doesn't want to go. As it turned out, in her past life, Ji Wan was bullied in high school, and when Su Min tricked her into going to the reunion, she was forced to confront the girl who used to bully her, which is why Ji Wan is, at first, so against going again. However, when Ji Wan arrives at her desk at work the next day and sees the box of cheap fake earrings on her desk, a gift from Su Min to make herself look better at the reunion, Ji Wan changes her mind and, together with He Yan, the two girls go for a major makeover. From now on, she's in charge of her destiny. The makeover works, and when Ji Wan arrives at the high school reunion, everyone who had been badmouthing her just seconds before is amazed. But Ji Wan is not here to show off her amazing outfit and new haircut. Remembering her past confrontation in the bathroom, Ji Wan heads to the ladies' room. Just like before, her bullies go in and start to talk about how Su Min is too nice to Ji Wan. As they are gossiping, Ji Wan's former bully, a rough-talking girl named Yeji, starts checking the bathroom stalls. But instead of hiding, Ji Wan steps out and confronts the girls. Ji Wan asks them to explain what she did wrong in the first place, and the girls reply that, back in high school, the story went that Ji Wan made Su Min break up with a boy named Yun Ho, and now Ji Wan has even stolen Min Huan, whom they think Su Min liked first. Stunned at the creativity of Su Min's lies, as Ji Wan is explaining her side of the story, Yun Ho himself shows up. Now a successful chef, Yunho makes it clear that he never dated Su Min, and it dawns on the bullies that, while they had been bullying Ji Wan for no reason, it had been Su Min's lies that had been tricking them all along. Once at home, Yunho calls Ji Wan and explains that, back in high school, he had written her a letter and confessed his feelings. However, his heart was broken when he received a harsh response letter from Ji Wan. This surprises Ji Wan since she liked Yunho back then and neither received the confession letter nor wrote back. Meeting for dinner the next day, Ji Wan sees the letter and puts together that Su Min had copied her handwriting and had created this whole misunderstanding. Walking back from her meal, Ji Wan suddenly starts to feel like she is being followed. Just as she starts to feel scared, Min Huan jumps out to surprise her. As they are talking, Min Huan, who is angry about how coldly he is suddenly being treated by his girlfriend whose attention he took for granted, mentions that her makeup makes her look like a cheater like her mother, a detail that Su Min had let slip. Ji Wan is thrown. She had never mentioned the fact that her mother had cheated to Min Huan. When Min Huan violently grabs her wrist in frustration, Ji Hyok suddenly turns up and starts beating him up, only stopping when Ji Wan begs him to. 
Standing in the park, with Min Huan running away, Ji Hyuk confesses that he has feelings for Ji Won. As for Min Huan, having escaped Ji Hyuk's fist, Min Huan runs into Su Min while sitting on the side of the road. Spotting her opportunity, Su Min comforts him, but when Min Huan leans in for the kiss, Su Min rejects him, pretending to be upset. Getting into a taxi together, a later flashback shows that before going home, Su Min kisses Min Huan on the cheek. At work the next day, Ji Wan can see that something is going on between Su Min and Min Huan and encourages them to go for lunch, using her card. With Ji Wan's money in hand, Min Huan takes Su Min to a fancy restaurant and they spend a fortune on an extravagant meal as they lavish attention on each other. Meanwhile, Ji Wan goes to Ji Hyuk and asks him to teach her some self-defense. Coincidentally also, a fighting expert, Ji Hyuk teaches Ji Wan how to flip people a skill that will prove very useful for her. The next day, when Ji Won accidentally drops her phone, Ji Hyuk sees that she's listening to BTS. Naturally, they start talking about the BTS hits Dynamite and Spring Day until it dawns on them that both those BTS songs were from later than 2013, meaning they are from the future. As we discover, Ji Hyuk had actually also time-traveled, having died in a car crash shortly after attending Ji Won's funeral where he learned about the affair and Ji Won's murder. In his previous life, Ji Hyuk had a massive crush on Ji Won, whom he'd first met back in college on a drunken night when Ji Won had ranted to him about her life. Later, Ji Hyuk saw Ji Won, who doesn't remember who it was she had been ranting to that night, taking care of a stray cat on their college campus. The same cat who would cause his car accident and whom Ji Hyuk now raises in his second life. Like Ji Won, before Ji Hyuk died, he had also ridden with the mysterious taxi driver, and during the drive, Ji Hyuk spoke to the man about how much he regrets missing his chances to be with Ji Won and not protecting her. With his second life, Ji Hyuk is determined to protect Ji Won, like he couldn't do before. Back to the present, now that Ji Won knows that Ji Hyuk is also from the future like herself, Ji Won tells him everything, from how fate is inevitable but can be shifted to someone else, to her plan to get revenge on Min Hwan and Su Min by getting them to marry each other. Ji Hyuk promises to help her, and having an ally is about to especially be useful as the company's work retreat is coming up. Fast forward to the retreat. After a tense game of Catch the Flag, Su Min directly asks Ji Won why she is being so cold towards her, and Ji Won replies that she doesn't like Su Min anymore. Ji Won also adds that she needs to focus on starting a family with Min Hwan. The words have the desired effect, and Su Min walks away more determined than ever to steal Min Hwan and Ji Won's future family away from her. Following Su Min back to her tent, Min Hwan tries to comfort her, and the two of them end up sleeping together. But instead of falling for each other like in Ji Won's past life, when they wake up the next morning, Min Hwan tells Su Min that they shouldn't tell Ji Won about their night and just keep it as a beautiful memory. Annoyed and offended, Su Min has to watch as Min Hwan is overly nice to Ji Won, who realizes that her plan hasn't gone how she expected. Returning to the office, Min Hwan and Su Min are sent on a work outing to a supermarket to set up a free sample stand. However, while working together, Su Min continues to flirt openly with Min Hwan, and they almost hook up in a storeroom before a phone call interrupts. While the two of them were distracted, Min Hwan and Su Min forgot to put up the allergy sign, and this mistake led to a man having an allergic reaction. The pair follow the man and his furious wife to the hospital, and Min Hwan pays the couple off. Having cashed out on his cover-up when Min Hwan's stocks drop, he decides to marry Ji Won right away to freeload off her savings. Aware of his plans, Ji Won prepares herself for a lazy proposal like in her last life. However, Min Hwan's proposal includes everything from drones to a villa for Ji Won to celebrate her birthday, most of which was organized by Ji Hyuk, of course. After the proposal, Su Min approaches Ji Won. In a crazy move, when Ji Won rejects her attempts to smooth things over, Su Min throws herself off the pier into the dark water. Jumping in to save Su Min, Ji Won finds herself being pulled deeper by Su Min. Luckily, Ji Hyuk jumps in and saves them. After calming down, everyone returns to the villa. However, Min Hwan is surprised to find Su Min in his bed, inviting him to sleep with her. Despite sleeping with her best friend, Min Hwan is determined to marry Ji Won, and a few days later gets Ji Won and his parents together for the traditional family introduction dinner. Ji Won enters wearing a skin-tight outfit and is met by Min Hwan's mother, who gives her a long list of requests and demands. Although Ji Won initially plays along, lines get crossed when Min Hwan's mother insults Ji Won's father. Ji Won responds by standing up and calling off the wedding, just a few days after the proposal. After the dinner, Min Hwan rushes to Ji Won's house but is shocked to see that not only has she called off their wedding but she's moved. The next day, before Min Hwan can say anything, Ji Won slaps him in front of the office. Pulling from her handbag a pair of red panties, she exposes Min Hwan for cheating and throws their engagement ring off. The rumors spread like wildfire. When their manager, a man named Gyeong-uk, who has always had a crush on Su Min, 
spots Minhuan and Su Min talking later that day. He attacks Minhuan and quickly the whole office puts together that Su Min must have been the other woman. To make things worse, when the company finds out about what happened at the supermarket, Min Huan gets transferred to a different department and Su Min is fired since she was just a contract worker to begin with. As Su Min is packing her things, the man who had the allergic reaction and his wife show up and begin blaming Ji Wan for faking the allergy incident. Taking one look at the online letter that the couple is referring to, Ji Wan instantly knows that Su Min has faked her handwriting again. Not putting up with any of Su Min's scheming, Ji Wan calls her out and exposes Su Min. Cornered, Su Min reveals at that moment that she's pregnant. Min Huan is stunned again. Unable to process the news, Min Huan gets drunk and passes out on the street where two of Ji Hyok's friends pretending to be loan sharks kidnap and tie him to a chair. Scared for his life, Min Huan promises to get married and pay them back. Left with no choice, Min Huan goes back to Su Min and proposes to her. Little does Min Huan know that Su Min is faking being pregnant, and the second he leaves, she puts a notice online looking for a positive pregnancy test and sonography photo. Despite several setbacks, the wedding day arrives and Su Min tries her best to convince herself that she has won. After all, she is marrying the love of Ji Wan's life, or so she thinks. However, her assumptions start to waver when Ji Wan shows up, dressed from head to toe in white, and thanks Su Min for picking up her trash. The words sting Su Min just minutes before she walks down the aisle. At the same time, Ji Wan's colleague Ju Ran has been struggling with her unhappy marriage to her lazy husband. In addition to neglecting his family and leaving Ju Ran to run their household as well as earn their income, when Sok Jun, Ji Hyok's secretary, arrives at the restaurant to celebrate Ju Ran's promotion, he spots Ju Ran's good for nothing husband having an affair with one of Ju Ran's friends. But more about that and how it ties in with Ji Wan's story in a second. Back to Ji Wan. Arriving back from the wedding, which went south quickly, especially when Yeji and the other school bullies showed up, Ji Wan and Ji Hyuk are met with a surprise of their own. Standing outside their fancy apartment complex is Ji Hyuk's ex fiance, the snaky Yu Ra. Taken aback, Ji Wan goes home. However, sitting down, she gets a call from Hee Yan. Ju Ran has stomach cancer, the same kind that Ji Wan had in her past life. Has her fate somehow gone to Ju Ran instead of Su Min? Meanwhile, having changed her mind about their called off engagement, Yu Ra decides to send Su Min an envelope. Inside the envelope are photos of Ji Wan and Ji Hyuk looking in love, as well as papers that show that Ji Hyuk has not only given Ji Wan a fortune in cash and real estate, but is next in line to take over the company. Flicking through the photos, Su Min finally realizes what Ji Wan meant at the wedding, and she's furious. Yu Ra also meets Min Huan in person and offers him a small fortune in return for killing Ji Wan. When Min Huan later sees Ji Wan with Ji Hyuk's friend whom he recognizes as the loan shark who kidnapped him, something snaps inside Min Huan. Together with Su Min, they agree to take Yu Ra up on her offer. First things first, Su Min goes back to Busan and meets with her father. You see, when Su Min was young, her father abandoned her with her mean mother to be with Ji Wan's mother. That is why Su Min approached Ji Wan back in school and why she is so desperate to steal everything from Ji Wan. While Ji Wan still had a loving father, Su Min had been left to be alone. Visiting her father and Ji Wan's mother, she offers them money to hire a truck and crash into Ji Wan. They agree. Soon afterwards, while Ji Wan is driving back from visiting her father's graveyard, Sok Jun calls Ji Hyuk to tell him that Ji Wan's mother has rented a truck. Ji Hyuk jumps in his car and manages to block the truck speeding towards Ji Wan with his car, saving Ji Wan's life. Rushing Ji Hyuk to the hospital, Ji Wan overhears Sok Jun ordering someone to go after her mother and Su Min's father. She quickly comes to the horrible realization that Su Min and Min Hwan must have planned her murder. At the hospital while Ji Hyuk is lying unconscious but alive, Ji Wan gets a message from Ju Ran who thinks her husband is cheating on her. Later, Ju Ran tells Ji Wan and Hee Yan that she has reported her husband for adultery and plans to go with the police to catch the couple in the act. Tagging along, when Ji Wan arrives at Ju Ran's house, she sees that it is exactly the same as the day she died in 2023, from the red heels in the doorway to the candies on the shelf. As Ju Ran's husband starts arguing, Ji Wan grabs a golf club and starts to smash the glass table, although everyone in the room thinks Thinks she's crazy. A moment later, when Ju Ran's husband pushes Ju Ran, all she falls on is broken glass. After this incident, Ji Wan reasons that the only way to shift her fate from Ju Ran to Su Min is for someone to seduce Min Huan. That way, Su Min will be the cheated on woman and will die instead of Ju Ran. At first, she tries to seduce him herself, before Ji Hyuk, having woken up and recovered from the accident, sends Yu Ra the red shoes and candy. Ji Wan doesn't have to be the other woman. Instead, they can set Yu Ra up and kill two birds with one stone. With this news, Ji Wan tells Min Huan exactly what she thinks of him, which enrages him. 
Later, after the call, Min Huan stalks Ji Wan at the office where Ji Wan is working overtime alone in the dark. Scared of his violent tendencies, Ji Wan tries to hide. However, when Min Huan finds her, he demands to know why she is treating him like this. When Ji Wan explains that she knows he worked with Su Min to kill her, Min Huan blows up and starts suffocating Ji Wan, only stopping once Ji Hyuk shows up. Having passed out, when Ji Wan wakes up, she and Ji Hyuk craft a plan to make sure that Su Min catches Yu Ra and Min Huan together to bring them down once and for all. The first step in their plan is sending Min Huan a notice from the company with a clause relating to a handsome spouse's death compensation. He reacts exactly as they expect and runs to Yu Ra, offering to kill Su Min for the money. As a result, when Su Min enters their hotel room after getting tipped off by Ji Hyuk, of course, she overhears Min Huan talking about getting her life insurance money just like Ji Wan did in her past life. Unlike last time, however, when Su Min storms into the bedroom where she sees Min Huan and Yu Ra in bed together, Yu Ra tells Min Huan to follow through on his promise and Min Huan knocks her out. Waking up tied to a staircase, when Min Huan comes back from opening the gas to kill his new wife, Su Min leaps at him with a knife. After a vicious fight, Su Min ends up pushing Min Huan onto the glass table. Following Min Huan's death, Ji Hyuk and Ji Wan get together with their friends for a night of food and drinks. However, once everyone leaves, someone rings the doorbell. When Ji Wan opens the door, Su Min steps in and tasers her. Opening her eyes, Ji Wan sees Su Min pouring oil all over her apartment. Ji Wan is not surprised, she anticipated this. Without knowing about the camera that Ji Wan had set up, Su Min explains that since she's good at playing the victim, she will get away with Min Huan's murder. However, Su Min also doesn't know about Ji Wan's judo lessons. Snapping through the zip ties holding her, Ji Wan brings Su Min down. With Su Min pinned on the ground, Ji Hyuk, along with some policemen, came and took Su Min away. The next morning, Ji Hyuk and Ji Wan hear that Yu Ra has died in a car accident. Ji Hyuk's fate had gone to Yu Ra. Marry My Husband ends with Ji Wan and Ji Hyuk getting engaged, married, and eventually giving birth to two twins. They live happily ever after.